Do you ever feel like manifestation is just another thing on your to-do list that you don't have time for? Like your spiritual practice is something that you have to do? Honestly, you're not alone because I felt that way too. Something that's really changed my relationship with manifestation is blending it into my lifestyle so that no matter what I'm doing, I'm also manifesting. I call this manifestation as a lifestyle and it single-handedly made the entire manifestation journey more enjoyable for me and I've seen my desires show up with a lot more ease. Manifesting as a lifestyle has made manifestation go from feeling like a task to something I just naturally do because it's who I am. If you'd like to learn more about this, I've created a step-by-step guide for you. I'll link it in my show notes so you can check it out. You're listening to the Affirmation Addict Podcast with Pyle Corley. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so much for being here. And now it's time to get started. If you're looking for a space to navigate life's light and dark moments, I invite you to download my app, Affirm It. It's an app I crafted to help you create your spiritual practice because I know how hard it can be to manage your energy throughout all the different things life throws at us. So we celebrate the light and the dark. We're not asking you to be positive all the time. We're super, super raw, super real and welcoming to all the feelings. And so inside of the app, I've created a ton of intentional features to help you with your spirituality. We have daily affirmations to help you stay consistent on your journey. We have guides, practices, and journaling to help you with the self-improvement. And we have guided meditations and visualizations to help you deepen your practice and connect to yourself. One of my favorite things that I've created for the app is actually guided affirmations. So it's something you listen to. It helps you effortlessly reprogram your limiting beliefs. So I invite you to download the app today, start your free seven day trial. And after that, it's only $4.49 a month and even less if you do our annual plan. Head to the show notes to download it on your phone today. Hi, everyone. This is Pyle and welcome to another episode of the Affirmation Addict podcast. Today, I really want to be real with you and talk about something that can feel like a lot of pressure when it comes to manifestation and our spirituality. And that is that statement that we are the only creators of our own reality. Because there's this kind of stigma, right? There's a stigma where we're the only creators of our reality. And on one hand, that can be really empowering. But on the other hand, that can feel like so much pressure that it brings more anxiety than anything else that we can think of. And also, it makes us start to wonder, did I manifest the bad stuff in my life? Did I ask for the bad stuff? Because obviously, none of us are trying to call that in. So why is that happening? And so I just really want to take this time in this episode to explain um, a version of we are the creators of our own reality and how to make that a more empowering thing rather than something that makes you feel anxious or heavy or burdened. Um, Because I understand how paralyzing it can be when you have so much knowledge of how the world works, how energy works, how spirituality works, where it can be that fine line of exciting but also stressful and where it's almost like you know too much. And so I want to share with you just some perspectives on you are the creator of your reality and the caveat to that, and I say this with love, where you're the only one in your own way. And I'm not saying that to put pressure once again. I'm saying that to remind you that you seriously are so powerful because I think that statement can be taken in two ways, right? It can be taken as, this is awesome. I'm the only one in my own way. I can control myself. Or it can feel, once again, very scary. It can feel like, well, if I'm the only one in my own way, I have to take full responsibility. That's scary. I don't want to be fully responsible for my entire life. So there's two ways, and they're both completely valid. So I want to explain to you my perspective that's really helped me on my journey um, in hopes of helping you, in hopes of taking off that pressure and knowing yourself as a creator of your reality in a really empowering, in a really exciting and beautiful way. So kind of backtracking in terms of how our reality is created, how manifestation works, a little snippet. I have more in-depth episodes on this and I have more in-depth information in Affirm It of the manifestation process, et cetera, et cetera. But when our realities are created, you can dive into quantum physics to really 
If you need the science, if you need the logic, look at quantum physics. If you trust me, hear me out and just be open. If you don't like this perspective, you can ignore it. But when it comes to our reality, so ages zero to seven, our subconscious mind is like a sponge. Our subconscious mind, when we're children, we are learning, we're absorbing. We are soaking in everything we see, hear, listen to, talk about around us. So we are just absorbing. And what that really means, why that's important is because our subconscious minds are basically a peek into what we're calling into our reality. Our subconscious mind is the way they work is that our reality in terms of our values, our beliefs, our preferences, our habits, our understanding of ourselves and how the world works, that all lives in the subconscious part of your brain, in your subconscious mind. That is important because when it comes to our subconscious mind, Everything we are observing about the world, everything we are taking in currently as an adult, whoever you are, whatever age you are now, you are basically filtering your world through your subconscious mind. You're filtering your world through that seven-year-old person who learned all of these things unless you've done reprogramming work, unless you've done rewiring work, your seven-year-old or up to seven-year-old self is a huge filter as to how you feel the world works. So this is why consciously you might know that and you might believe consciously that abundance is infinite. Abundance is limitless. You might have been doing the spiritual work a lot and you're like, yes, I am willing to buy into this idea. But you might not see evidence of that yet because your subconscious mind still does not buy that belief. So that is a big caveat to how our reality is created is our subconscious mind is a big filter. It's a big kind of lens as to the way we experience our reality. Now, building off of that, how reality is actually created and how it is always shifting is through our belief systems. And the reason our belief systems are at the core foundation is because that is what our subconscious mind is saying yes to. Our subconscious minds, think of it like an assistant who just looks at everything your subconscious mind is like, this is true, this is true, this is true. And your assistant, aka your subconscious mind is like, okay, I will make sure your reality models everything you believe. That is basically the role of your subconscious mind is to prove yourself right. Our subconscious minds and the way we are programmed as a whole, as a human race, is to prove ourselves right. And that is the job of our subconscious mind. And the reason that manifestation plays into a part is if you can shift your fundamental beliefs, you are shifting your fundamental beliefs of your subconscious mind. And therefore, your subconscious mind is going to try and show you a new reality that matches those beliefs. I want to say that again, because I know I'm throwing a lot in and you might understand this, but this is so important to realize why you are the only one in your own way in a most in the most loving way I can say that. This is so important to realize that your beliefs are what are your subconscious mind's cues, right? Your subconscious mind's rules and your subconscious mind is trying to obey those rules by showing you a reality that confirms what your beliefs are. So once again, if you shift your beliefs, on a subconscious level, then your subconscious mind is going to try and shift your reality to match those new beliefs. And so as a whole, why I really do believe we are the only ones in our own way is because our beliefs are completely up to us. Our truths and our beliefs, the way our beliefs and truths are formed is simply through repetition and through willingness to believe, I think is a big confusion in the affirmation world and the manifestation world. There's a lot of schools of thoughts here, and I'll tell you the ones that really resonate with me, and they might be different than what resonates for you. 
So there's one school of thought that says repetition is the key to changing your beliefs because the more and more you hear it, the more and more your brain, your brain believes it, which is true. I've seen that and I believe it. Like if we all grew up learning that, I give this example every time, that the sun is blue, not yellow, we would all believe that the sun is blue. And that's just the way a belief is formed. That's one aspect. And so that the solution and how to work with that school of thought is through repeating affirmations. There's another one where it's your beliefs are formed by your subconscious mind, what you learned when you were ages zero to seven. The way to reprogram those beliefs is to really take a look and observe those beliefs and realize that those beliefs are just a choice. They were just something you said yes to and having the willingness to say no to them and be like, no, I don't want to buy this. And that con- you're bringing in your conscious mind to reject elements of your subconscious mind. So those are the two big schools of thoughts. I think the first one, the affirmations, are something that feel really accessible to a lot of us. It's easy to do. You're basically overriding your own beliefs. The second one I think is super effective when beliefs are harder. So I think I would always recommend to try affirmations first. And if affirmations aren't working by themselves, include the second school of thought where you take the self-reflective route. You take the I am where re- I am rejecting these thoughts. I am rejecting these beliefs where you bring in your conscious mind while also practicing affirmations. Because from what I've seen doing it yourself, affirmations are one of the easiest and one of the most successful ways to reprogram your belief systems. Other ways to reprogram include, I think, through deep meditation, through hypnosis. Um, and there's other energy forms, but most of the time you need someone else to do it, which is not a problem. That's a beautiful thing. Um, but a lot of the times when you change your mind, when you shift your mind, the biggest thing is you have a willingness to do so. Point blank, we practice affirmations because we're willing to change what we currently believe. We might not realize that, but ultimately what you need is a willingness to shift your beliefs. And that's why, once again, I really do believe we are the only ones in our own way. Because once you can take away passing the blame or blaming your boss or your job for how you feel, you can start to really take ownership and be like, okay, if my belief is my job isn't making me happy, how can I reprogram that? How can I say I'm happy regardless of what my job is, regardless of what my career is? That is where you can start to really shift in your own way with yourself in a really empowering way and really get out of your own way. Now, part three to this episode is, okay, how do we actually get out of our own way? So you're like, Pyle, fine. I agree with you. Yes, I'm in my own way. So how do I actually get out of my own way? And my number one tip for you to get out of your own way is to be kinder to yourself on this journey. Be easier on yourself on this journey and work on enjoying this journey. Because I think When we start to get dependent on this journey, we start to depend on manifestation for our happiness. We start to say, I need this manifestation or I won't be happy. Or we start to say things like, if I don't have this, I'm not going to be okay. And we start to be conditional on our manifestations. And we start to put boundaries on our spirituality. That is, I think, when we start to really get in our own way. So the way to get out of it, in my opinion, is to take a step back and create more ease in your journey. The way to create more ease is honestly, it is a choice. So I don't have like a technique or a ritual. I mean, I have affirmations. I have meditations for you to call in more ease. But honestly, it's a perspective shift point blank. The biggest thing is for you to be willing to go on this journey without it defining anything about who you are. So it's kind of separating yourself from the world around you. It's detaching your worth. It's detaching your level of enoughness from the world around you, from your physical reality, because we are so much more than our physical realities. We are kind of limitless beings. We are energetic beings. We are so much more than the homes we live in and the jobs we have. Like that is one layer of who we are, but we're so much deeper and so much more expansive than that. And that's what I really want you to remember To remember, in order to get out of your own way is to really find your reasoning 
Find your why for being on this journey. Why are you on the manifestation journey? Why are you on a spiritual journey? Most of the time, people's answers are, I want to manifest X, Y, and Z. I want to manifest something specific. Okay, after you manifest something specific, then what? Are you, what is the point? Are you going to feel a certain way? Are you going to get to a certain place? What is going to shift? And that shift, that perceived keyword here, perceived shift that you think your manifestation will bring you is really what you're after. And 99% of the time, that perceived shift is a feeling. We are chasing feelings ultimately, and we're chasing feelings through physical experiences. So I really recommend in order to get out of your own way is reminding yourself, you are the cultivator and curator of how you feel. You are capable of choosing how you respond, how you feel at all times. So to get out of your own way, if your biggest priority can just be to feel a little bit better. I'm not asking you to feel good all the time. I'm not saying you have to be positive all the time. Absolutely not. All I'm saying is if you can just work on observing and managing and navigating your feelings, sit with the hard ones, sit with the good ones. I believe in feeling all of your feelings. So if you can really dive deep and become a master of your own feelings, I really think there is nothing that can get in your way, including yourself. I really, really think, and I actually know this because this is what's worked for me, Once I started to prioritize my feelings over my results, I noticed how much anxiety I had. I noticed how much guilt I was feeling when I was doing all this affirmation work and something wasn't happening. So what that means is I'm not saying don't practice affirmations. I'm not saying don't be on the spiritual journey. What I'm saying is shifting your intention to be to feel a little bit more ease, to feel a little bit better about what you're manifesting. So say you're trying to manifest your money or a soulmate. If you can work through those affirmations, if you can work on that spirituality, if you can work on shifting those beliefs from a lens of feeling better about that topic rather than getting result, I really think you'll be able to start to merge that gap of doing all the work and not seeing results. Because right now we're trying to look for physical results. But what about energetic shifts? What about emotional feeling shifts? I think if you start to practice those affirmations, knowing that you might feel and experience unseen shifts before the physical comes, I really think you'll be able to kind of, you figured it out. I really believe that you'd be able to get out of your own way because nothing will be able to stop you. Nothing will be able to obstruct how you feel if you know that you're the creator of your own feelings. If you know that you can choose to feel a certain way, you're allowed to feel certain things, but you also are well aware that when a feeling comes, you can feel it fully and just enjoy that feeling and learn from that feeling what you need to. So I know this kind of went all over the place in a few different directions, but I ultimately wanted to create this episode to explain to you that we are truly the creators of our reality. I believe we are co-creators with spirit, with energy, with the universe. I really do believe that. But ultimately, I do believe that we have the most influence of our reality. Um, And that is because of our conscious choice of our subconscious beliefs. I believe that we have the most say. Maybe there are other people. Maybe there are ancestral energies. Maybe there's a bunch of other stuff that plays a role. However, I do believe that you have the biggest say in how your reality unfolds. There might be stuff that you can't explain. There might be stuff that you didn't want and you don't have to try and figure out why that happened. But if you can start to realize that you have the biggest say, you can influence your reality in a really beautiful and positive way. So I hope this episode resonated. I know it was a little different. There wasn't really necessarily a tangible point. It was almost like a rant or a ramble. So please let me know if this resonated with you, if this hit home and answered any questions that you had on a deeper level. This is one of those things where it's like, I want to share about it, but it's not a structured episode. It kind of just flows. So I really, really hope this resonated and thank you so much for listening. I always get a ton of questions in my DMs from people asking how I can manifest X. 
The truth is you can really manifest anything as long as it's for the greatest good. And if you're having trouble manifesting something right now, or you feel stuck on your journey, I have a really beautiful resource I've made for you. It's a free quiz. It's called the Manifestation Archetype Quiz. And it's something that I've created so you can find out your manifestation style to give you more clarity on your spiritual journey. After taking the quiz, you're going to receive the best resources for your specific archetype to help you attract your desires based on where you're at and what you want to create. So you can find a link to the quiz in the show notes or just head to my website at www.affirmation-addict.com. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If this episode resonated with you, it would mean the world to me if you can rate, interview the podcast and share it on your social media. So I know to keep creating episodes that are inspiring you to manifest. I'm so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today. And I'd love for you to join the community by following at Affirmation Addict on Instagram. To continue diving into spirituality and manifestation, head over to my website, affirmation-addict.com. Until next time, I'm sending you so much love and so much healing energy. 